Hello, Sardar Gritli and Coin News with you. We continue to tell about leading and most promising blockchain projects. So you don't need to understand the technical details of blockchain technology to use financial products aimed at consumer adoption of blockchain. Kasha's wallet system, integrated with the peer-to-peer -peer exchange with full spectrum of fully digital financial services, enables its community to save, spend, borrow, and get insured with a simplified user experience in a legally compliant way. Today, we have the opportunity to speak with Kasha founder and CEO, Kumar Garal. Hello Kumar, nice to see you. There are a lot of peer-to-peer -peer payment worldwide systems today. What is the main difference of yours? What is the Kasha's mission? Compared to any existing peer-to-peer -peer product, we have two main differences. Certainly, the first difference which we have is in our technology and a product which we are building. So what we are building, if we see it very closely, we are building the world's first network, which is enabling our user to transfer money to anyone in the world through our wallets in minute. And when we say this peer-to-peer, -peer, most of these companies, when they talk peer-to-peer, -peer, which means that you need to also have the similar wallet on the other side, correct? Which means I can transfer money from wallet A to B as long as A and B both are in the same network. And this is what cash are changing fundamentally. If you want to transfer money from cash a wallet, you don't need to be have a cash a wallet on the other side. Basically, you can send money to any existing wallet or card anywhere in the world. And that's something which even if we don't talk about crypto wallet, let's talk about even non-crypto wallets which exist. Nobody has this, this kind of feature exists. So this is something which we are talking about a feature for which there is no competition right now existing to the market. First, the second difference which we have is in our team. If you see, if you compare our team with any similar project which you have heard in or which sounded similar to you in past, if you see, if you compare our team, you will find a huge experience gap. Our team, which have more than not one century, more than two century of experience together, it gives us an advantage that we are not only very clear that what we have to do today to build such kind of technology, our financial product, but it also gives us an ability to see that what kind of challenges will come in the future of the actions which we are doing now to build a financial product, which most of these startups or most of the companies who do this forget. They really don't care that uh, sometimes it may be a gold rush of raising money through the ICO, they neglect some of the regulatories uh, uh, complication or sometimes just oversimplifying the problem. But what the, the mistake which they do, which stops them to seeing that how to scale such product once you reach a certain stage. And because we have a such a ex huge experience, we have both the advantage. We can see what we have to do today. And we also see that what we need to do tomorrow to make this product successful. You offer to users facilitating low-cost currency exchanges. Tell us please how it works. So how are we able to cut the cost? It's a bit complicated that how we cut the cost because our unique technology is actually not cutting the cost, but it's actually cutting many of the intermediaries which currently exist in the traditional system. And the more you cut the intermediaries, the more you're able to save. And those savings are actually going to our users in the form of less fee. So the cashier is able to find the optimal path by mixing the traditional system, which is existing, and merging it with the blockchain technology to create an optimal solution. If you see that our money movement, how the money moves currently in a present generation, it's more or less the same how it was moving 100 years ago. We had banks, which says that, okay, we want to pay a person A to a person B, which is a customer of a second bank. We do change the technology to communicate between bank A and bank B, but really we didn't change a lot of process how this was done and that's where and we keep building new technologies and now we are at a path where we see that there are many intermediaries in the process so if we take a step back and we see that how exactly the money is 
need to move today you find that there are many of these parties are irrelevant and that's what kasha did so and that's how it transformed all into the savings kasha products can enable its users to access the global economy in a decentralized manner which way yeah so first thing which we say the decentralized manner it's more like enabling everyone on the planet to participate into the global economy so currently we have almost 40 to 50% of people who are not participating in our global economy because of one or the other reason either they don't have proper kycs to participate or get access to any financial instrument or either they are completely outside the banking system while what we are proposing that if we have a very simple to use wallet which can connect everyone on the planet through their existing infrastructure which means that we able to at least bring the 60% of population who have these products and then other 50% of the population connecting them through the simple technology like telecoms or simple to use wallets or just say through simple master or visa cards or any card system through which they can start communicating with the rest of the world so this is the step 1 to bring the inclusion now the second the question is that how exactly it's enabling user to access the global economy if we think if we again take a step back here and if we see what is the biggest problem for any individual to not participate in a global economy let's talk take an example there is a person say in italy okay he have his money in his bank account where sometimes either he pay neg- he have to pay negative uh, where the banks pay him sometime negative interest rate or not at all rates uh, interest while you have ali or ram in a countries like india or pakistan or a bangladesh where first you have a huge interest rates second uh, where if you put the money in a bank you get decent interest rate but more worse than that the people in this countries who want to take loan from the bank or through any other source have to pay unbelievable amount of interest sometimes 15% so if you see why we have such a gap where the one side of the world money is sitting in a bank and users have to pay negative interest rate which means a user paid to keep his money in a bank while the other side of the world user have is being charged 15 to 20% to use the money so there is certainly a gap and what is stopping to fill this gap and there is a one core problem that the moving money from this point a to b is very complicated so if we solve this fundamental problem which we are proposing that if uh, that our card system will enable to pay to you anyone in the world no matter the uh, the person be on the other side of the world have a cash account or not which means if we able to facilitate this transaction the moving money across the world becomes very easy and then you start seeing a lot of innovation coming on top of this and that's what i proposed in our uh, my my white paper in a next step that we want to also include peer to peer loan system where people in this country is we able to pay the people in the other part of the country where the interest rates are very expensive in a complete p2p way and so that you bring everyone into the global economy but at the same time creating a win win for everyone who is participating you say that kasha is a just typical banking app but a full spectrum of customer centric digital financial services Can you please for our viewers more details about it So uh, if let's I I think what we are talking about to defining kasha because if we try to define what exactly kasha is we get the answer of this so what kasha is a gateway of a consumer centric application but at the same time giving them affordable financial solution which is it is cheaper than the existing financial products uh, but doing in a such a way that we can have a consumer adoption of a blockchain technology but without having users understanding the technical details and complexity of such technology because that's what always hampers the innovation or say adoption of any technology because nobody in a world is really interested in using ai or robotics or blockchain or any technology what we really care about 
is the applications build on these technology. If a user have been given a 30 page manuals to use artificial intelligence, nobody, I bet nobody, is, nobody in the world is going to use Google again. But what Google provided that, hey, if you want to go to office, use us, use Google Maps without knowing how the technology works. And that what we need to do also in the blockchain space. And that's what Kasha is trying to do and create a consumer centric application where our users are able to use our wallet systems, which is linked through the card, which enables them to deposit, transfer, spend, lend money to anyone in the world. But in a way which is completely simplified user experience and most important, a complete legal and compliant way. We cannot miss this last word, legally compliant way. Because I think that's what some of the time in the blockchain domain, we are completely missing. Because we, we sometimes think so radical that we start trying to ignore the law completely. And I think that's not the perfect solution. If we really want a mass adoption, we have to try to find a, a balance between a customer, a technology, but also the regulation and the legal compliance. You offer an innovative trading exchange for FX traders. What innovations does your exchange consist of? Uh, so this is uh, the tra our trading exchange was actually one of the first product which we built. And uh, it was not actually inspired, inspired with any uh, a financial product. It was funny, like today we are building a, a next generation financial application. But it was more inspired with the cryptocurrency prop industry problems. So what happens that two years ago, uh, I, I wanted to trade Bitcoins. You know? And uh, there was not really many people I can sell them. So I thought, okay, there are many people, I'm sure in the world who wanted this, but I'm not able to find them. Why? Because right now I'm constrained, limited. My limitation is the in the market where I try to sell this. And maybe there is not any buyer in this market, but maybe in the other part of the world, correct? So what we thought, how about if I want to sell my Bitcoin, let's say example, I want to sell my Bitcoin, I'm in London and I want to sell my Bitcoin to a person in India. It's if somehow I able to do this, it will create this trading pool global and more bigger where every crypto trader on the world will be able to participate. But it turns out there is no solution exists something like that. Because uh, the most uh, innovative product I think two years ago we had in the crypto trading world was local bitcoins where you find someone and you sell. But the local bitcoins solved the problem to a certain extent that as long as you have different local traders to trade with you. And that's the real problem because the crypto community industry was such a small that you don't have many of them. So we, I was thinking about solving this problem. And when we started thinking about this problem, we found that, hey, bingo, you know, we can solve this problem, but at the same time, we can solve also the money transfer problem. And that's where the, all the idea happened. And what we did, we really developed a system called BTC to bid and a year and a half ago, where a, a seller in London of a Bitcoin, it was able to sell his Bitcoin to a buyer in New Delhi without worrying about getting cheated, how worrying about how he's gonna receive his money or without paying huge fees. And it worked. And it worked so well that in less than six months, we have more than 12,000 traders on our platform. And together we exchange more than 2,113 Bitcoins uh, altogether. Uh, until we decided to take this product more mainstream and not just as a crypto exchange, but also to solve some of the real world problems of money transfer, but in, in a way which can be served to more broader community. Uh, so if we talk about the exchange, it's still on our exchange, people are able to sell and buy different currencies and not in the same market, but across any market, but paid locally. So the innovation is that you can sell internationally, but get paid locally. You say on your website, that you are a cross-functional and full-stack team led by successful entrepreneurs who build their companies from Stack, which are now part of Fortune Top 15 companies in the world. Tell us please your team's story. I, I think we pretty much write the bio of everyone, but um, just for the question. Uh, 
So we have a team of five co-founders, but now we have extended team of more than uh, 20 people, including the advisors uh, and, and the team members. Uh, if we see, uh, we collected the team who have obviously certainly a huge experience in payments and banking, but at the same time to keep the innovation up and live, uh, we have a mix of young people who are bringing the innovation from different community. So we have a team from blockchain, us. We have we have entrepreneurs from the successful background who, like personally, if I talk about my experience, uh, uh, this is my third company. Uh, my last two companies were successful. Uh, still, I have my first company, which is running fine in India. And I'm a chairman of that group, which is doing a very good job with the government. Uh, we have some of the top clients. Uh, uh, you can name any top 20 fortune companies which are in the client list, the governments. The company is running by its own. While um, coming to, to talking about me, what I got different recognition around the world. The recent one was that a United States government gave me extraordinary status for my work, which I done in uh, a blockchain industry, uh, which was a kind of big uh, recognition from a United States government. Uh, last company which I did was backed by AIG, which was an insurance product, very specified by the, the insurance market, which was acquired by Ezedra. Talking about our other co-founder, uh, he just sold his company uh, to uh, one, one and a half years to Baker Hughes, which is a general electric company. And we all know what is general electric. Um, so, and uh, before that he built, uh, before he was a worldwide director for Microsoft, a uh, C-suite executive cognizant, SAP. We only not have a team of people who worked for these company, the huge companies, but we built our companies and then we sold it to some of these huge giants of the world. This is uh, from the co-founding side, but if we also see our chief payment officer, he was quoted as one of the top payments guy in the world. Uh, if we talk our chief product officer, he worked in Next with uh, Apple co-founders and founders, build innovative products, have more than 30 years of experience. If you talk about our EVP in Asia, uh, the last job he had was working with World Bank to solve the emerging markets problem. So uh, if, if you take our EVP from Africa, Simo, uh, he was uh, elected as one of the most innovative banking uh, entrepreneur and have a huge experience working with First National Bank, which is one of the largest bank in South Africa. So if you see all these team members which we selected, uh, uh, let's, let's put in the word that they are very selective in terms of what they did and achieved, but they all driven with the same vision that there is a huge gap in the world which 500 year of banking is not able to solve. And somehow we have a challenge to solve this. And we all are bringing our market experience and different entrepreneur experience in a team to build that product out. And this is from the team side. But as you know, the, the, all the great teams need great advisors to also work with. So if you see our advisory board, uh, we, we were very glad that Mr. Bernard joined us. So talking about Mr. Bernard was the man who, did, who, who built, uh, who was the architect of Euro, which uh, mostly everywhere in Europe we use as a currency. Uh, he was regarded as one of the world's top currency traders in 1992 uh, in the world. Then we have one of the accomplished player in identity field, Mr. Dr. John Clippen. And Dr. John is working in, is a research scientist at MIT trying to solve the identity problem, identity crisis. Some of the books which he wrote was maybe most famous book he, he wrote was the author from Bitcoin to Burning Man and Beyond. The quest for identity and autonomy in a digital society. The second famous book he wrote was Crowd of One, a future of individual identity. We have a scientist in a team who is also philosophical. <laughs> you, you see, so, and that's sometimes you need to solve the, the problem uh, because you need to find a balance and you need to also understand the people on the other side. Because maybe sometimes the technology is not the only solution. Without understanding the people, the market, maybe technology fails. No, and, and that's what we are trying to bring with, from our advisory side so they can advise us on these things. And then if you see from the, the industry side, we have uh, executives from Qualcomm, then executed from Visa. We all know what is Visa. And an executive of Visa in our team helping us to solve some of the problems uh, in the payment industry. So 
uh, 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 if we talk about blockchain experience, we have a Professor Alex Nota, who is known for his work uh, from Qtum. So from Quantum, which is one of the largest blockchain we have seen, significant work as a professor in Tallinn University, where he's constantly researching on smart contracts. Uh, we, uh, from entrepreneur side, we have a superstar, uh, Tim Campbell, who was the winner of The Apprentice. So it's an entrepreneur show. So also in the advisory side, we try to keep a balance that so that we can have everything to achieve our purpose and not one a lot while the other leg is shot. Sounds great. Good team and strong advisors are yours. Tell us please about your partners and investors. So from partners and investors side, I think it would be too early right now to reveal who are our partners. Uh, you can just get an idea the kind of team and advisors and the companies we are working with. Uh, we do have some great backings, but we would like to, uh, to announce this in the future. Uh, the more we go uh, near the, the token sale. Uh, but some of the partnership which is already we announced or was actually mentioned in the white paper or we already uh, tested our product which we cannot hide anyway. So we have Oxus's group from India uh, which is working with the state government of India have uh, built one of the largest ledger called Ox Ledger which have 53 million people on that. So uh, that's one. If we talk about uh, uh, innovative products in the, the wallet industry, we have Airbits. So Airbits is one of the most safe and secure Bitcoin wallet, uh, which partnered with uh, Kasha to integrate some of their technology. So other, other if you talk about the other products uh, uh, like Agur, which is uh, a prediction market, use Airbits technology to, for the wallet services. And then from the main industry, we have Celestian Ventures, we have 2F Capital as our investor. And then there are uh, a bunch of different banks, which we are in part uh, talking with in different countries, depending on our requirements. So we have very requirement specific partners. They are trying to complete the puzzle, which we are building. Kasha is a lot of number events participant. Why? And what about another interview with us after your successful token sale? Uh, I, I'm glad that someone recognized that we are doing a lot of events and we are at least present. I thought nobody is really noticing it. Yeah. So, uh, so here's the thing. Um, I came into the industry three years ago. And what we are, I personally feel that we are talking a lot about technology while really not building something which is making sense for average users. And, and that's where Kasha came into the picture by with a real product where we showed the world that, hey, you know, this is the problem and that's how you solve this problem. And then obviously we learned a lot. Community teach us a lot. So these events not only helped uh, to, to speak about our idea to the different people, show our product which we built, answer the community fundamental problems, but also me personally to learn from the community that what is the exact gap so, and that's what inspired us to, uh, uh, to to participate in the event. But I think some of the things that which community likes, which who keep inviting us into these events as a speaker in a person to me or Kasha to, to, to present our product or to present our solution, which was already built. So I think that's one of the reason that why uh, we've been invited into so many events around the world. Uh, obviously, uh, if it's talking about uh, the product, if it's talking about uh, the technology, if it's talking about blockchain, uh, I have shown my commitments uh, already in participating into different events or talking with a different media group and conveying that what exact gap we need to fill. So no matter what, uh, uh, I, you, you just mentioned the successful token sale, the token sale have nothing to do with this mission. Uh, because the token sale is, um, is, is a medium to build a product to take to the society. While participating in the event was more driven by the reason to show the world that what is missing. So I think there will be no uh, 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 difference. Uh, you can keep seeing me into different events and speaking about uh, our products and showing our products. And of course, speaking with you uh, every time you give us a chance to speak. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your time, Kumar. Catch the good luck in building the largest payment platform on the earth. It was Kumar Gorao, founder and CEO of Kasha Project in Colescoin News Studio. See you soon. Thank you so much for your time.